What? New clothes? Fake grass? Family brunch? We know it by heart. Show up to the church, stand for the singing, sit in for the preaching. Then shuffle out as soon as we can. So what? You came, you took the pictures, you fulfilled your requirements. But there's more than that. And look, I get it. You've heard the story 10,000 times, told 10,000 different ways. But here's the short version. A child was born under mysterious circumstances. When he grew up, he healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, lived a perfect sinless life. Then he died on a cross as a sacrifice for us. Yes, us. Me, you, anyone you know, have known, or ever will know. Then he got up out of the grave, rolled away the stone, and walked out. And you might be thinking, okay, so what? Well, that's why we're here. Not the grass, not the bunnies, or the cream-filled eggs. But today we celebrate the gift given to all of us by God, the only God who conquered death itself. So what if today you change things up? What if today it wasn't just a tired fairy tale, but an absolute fact that someone loved you enough just as you are to give up their life for you? Because that is what today is all about. Did any one of us deserve this gift? No. Are any of us perfect people? No. Does it take some serious faith to believe everything I just said? You bet. But hey, so what? Come on, everybody stand, put your hands together. He is risen. Come on.
this year the old building the new building we're like well I think the new building because it all worked out well where are we gonna have Easter how about the cafe the cafe all right Easter at the cafe and we're gonna serve breakfast where are we gonna serve breakfast I don't know how about the new auditorium that's almost open ah, okay so anyway this is Easter at the cafe and we had a glorious first service thank you for being here today my name is Diane Larson, and I'm telling you what, God is on the move, and I'm not just saying that. God is doing so many incredible things. This first service was like, whoa, the energy in this place was powerful, so you were in the right place at the right time. Let me tell you a couple of things. Um, down at the very, very end of the hall, we have our play zone open, and so it's open at 50%, so it's not all done, but you can go and check it out. Bring your kiddos and your grandkids down there after service. There's a bouncy house, and there's all of that. Eat some breakfast if you haven't had breakfast yet. And also, I just want to say, if anybody needs prayer this morning, if you came with a burden or you came with a heavy heart today, we're going to bring our prayer teams up here, and I'm just going to ask that you take a couple moments and you just get some prayer and you get some ministry. We don't want you to come in with a burden and leave with a burden. We want you to come in and be refreshed and leave refreshed. So if you need anything, do not hesitate. We have beautiful ministry at the altar. These guys are going to lead us in more worship, and I just want to say welcome. Thank you for being here. We're so glad you're here. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear Unending 
amazing grace right now. And what that means in your own life. What today represents our risen Savior. That is why we're here. That's why we have breath today. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. And sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the first side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Broke my chains, freed my soul, and for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. And thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Yes, you did. And you took my place, laid behind my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting.
and give him a big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We're here because of what you did for us on the cross. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 that Jesus took up our pain. He bore our suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Here's the good news. Because of his wounds, we are healed. We are free. We are redeemed by his precious blood. We stand here today with confidence. That in him we have freedom. In him we have salvation. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you for that sacrifice you made for us. We thank you for the power of resurrection. Because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, oh God, we can proclaim salvation. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you move in a mighty way in this service, oh God, as you did in the first service. Touch your people. Fill your people with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Those who came troubled, oh God, I pray that you give them joy. 
Those who have questions, God, I pray that you answer them, God. Those who need healing, oh God, I pray that you touch their bodies. We pray for Pastor Dan, oh God, as he shares your truth, oh God. Speak through him, oh God. Use his mouth, oh God. Give him the words, O oh King of Kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and shout out that he is risen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We welcome you this morning to our new building. This is our second Sunday in this miracle building. Only God. I mean, this building is so big, nobody can get credit except for God, right? Amen. I told our people last week, every time we drive up to this building, I just want you to say, our God is a big God. Our God is a big God, right? If you're wondering, why are we in this room and not in the auditorium? There's a bigger room next door here, but we're getting it ready, okay? So we're in the cafe, Easter in the cafe. Look at your neighbor say, hey, we're having Easter in a cafe. Wow, how cool. Guys, and so many of you are filling up the back. There's some, there's some prime seats right up here too, right here and here. So uh, you don't have to stand in the back. There's, there's plenty of seats, ushers will help you. Uh, my name is Dan and we honestly just welcome you here, whether you've been here many times or whether this is your first time. And those um, who are first-timers, can we just welcome those right now? If you're a first-timer. Wow. God is doing amazing things. We're in the midst of a church that's being such awakened and revived. And uh, God's grown this church a lot. Our other building now, as of today, has a new church that is meeting in our former building. Isn't God good? So they were so excited to have their 1030 service today. I was over there earlier, prayed with them yesterday. And uh, we're thrilled to be in this building. And, but it's not about a building, right? It's about Jesus Christ who's in each of our hearts. But if you today are here and you don't know for sure where you stand with Jesus, that's why you're here, all right? That's why you're here. Because you're going to know for sure by the end of this service, wow, who Jesus is and what change he can make in your life. Amen. We invite you as well. Um, if you're new, fill out the hello card. It's right in front of you. We are not going to send it and put it on all kinds of algorithms with Google. All right? We will not do that with Microsoft. Uh, simply, we want to know how we can pray for you. And we know that when we have prayer needs, all of us have something. It's best to have people praying for us. And so there's about 17 of us on the prayer chain that just pray for every need. You share as much or as little as possible. Later in the service, I'm going to invite the the uh, prayer team to again at the end of the service because guess what they're available but I know there's a lot of needs here represented and they want to pray with you we're a we're a church that believes in people being saved healed and set free amen like he does the whole work amen so this Wednesday is our first Wednesday service in this new building I'm inviting you all back at seven o'clock why we're gonna have our beautiful worship team leading us in worship but we're also going to consecrate this building. We're going to consecrate it in worship and in prayer. Set this building aside. We're going to go and uh, go find places throughout this building and pray over the kids' ministries, the youth ministries, pray over the counseling center, pray over the play zone. We got a play zone, as Diane said, my wife. She said, after the service, go on down there. Even if you're not a kid, but you want to see and hear what God's doing, it's a play zone for the region. It's not yet done, but it's a play zone for the region for families with little kids or grandkids, all right? So just check it out after the service. Um, let's see. First Wednesday again. Be here Wednesday. Anything else I forget? Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. Look at your neighbor and say, we're having Easter in a cafe. First, that's a first. As you heard the video at the beginning, the theme of today is Easter so what? Easter, so what? You know, it's interesting that Easter is all about 
an Easter bunny, right? It's all about Easter eggs, and it's all about hallelujah. How many just love these? How many want one? I know, I know, I have six of them, and guess who they're for? Not y'all. Sorry. <laughs> Man, I love these. These are my favorite chocolate. At How many love these? Or something like, or the, the, they think it looks like a golden one, but it's hollow, but it's still chocolate. But what is Easter really about? I got something fun. I always love to share something fun. After Jesus died, Pontius Pilate talked to Joseph of Arimathea. And Joseph of Arimathea said, we would like to bury the body of Jesus in our tomb. And Pontius Pilate, who was in charge, he said, you paid a lot of money for that tomb. That was for your family. Why would you bury Jesus in that tomb? And Joseph of Arimathea said, you know what? He's only going to use it for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, right? Just the weekend. He's just got a short stay. You see, that's what Easter's about, right? But... Unfortunately, we've made it about a lot of traditions, like where did the bunny come from? It really comes from a pagan tradition of a goddess named Oester. Oester, sounds like Easter, right? Oester, and it was a goddess of fertility, and her animal symbol was a bunny. Why? Because they are hyper energetic about reproduction. <laughs> How do we say that? I don't know. Hyper energetic about reproduction. So... It's from a pagan holiday. It's not about the, the cross and the resurrection. And then the bunnies, actually, excuse me, the eggs come from this. This is actually from the Catholic Church from back to the 13th century that they asked their people during Lent to not eat eggs. And so when it co came towards the resurrection Sunday, they would encourage their families to paint eggs because they're looking forward to something again, eggs on resurrection Sunday. That's where that comes from. So that has a little bit more spirituality. But so much of this is politicized. So much of this is commercialized, isn't it? What is Easter truly, really about anyway? You're going to watch a video, and you're going to see what a difference the true message of resurrection has on some of our people in this church. No doubt your childhood was really difficult. Uh, can you paint a picture of what your childhood looked like? I had a broken home. My parents were immigrants, so they came here with the American dream and had forgotten about the five kids that they had. I, uh, we were physically abused. We were verbally abused. I remember on a rainy night on the way from Seattle to Federal Way, my mom had this red car and she looked back and said, I don't love you guys. And that struck me in my heart. Uh, when I was eight years old, my parents started attending a church and they were very involved in the ministry. That was from about eight to 12 years old. Uh, when I was 12 years old, they completely stopped and that really changed the picture of what our family was. It was a critical age that they stopped because I was going into my teen years. And because we were physically abused and verbally abused, I couldn't tell anybody that I was being sexually abused. I carried it with me from childhood all the way up until Middle school, didn't know how to ask for help. I was acting out, hoping that someone would sit down and have a conversation with me. Why are you acting this way? Why do you say these things? And, and no one really cared. When my parents fell off, that's when I fell off. What did that look like when you say fell off? That looked like me doing drugs at the age of 12, 13. That looked like me drinking, skipping school. That looked like me being rebellious against my parents, having no regard for authority, being sexually promiscuous. 
it looked like me being pregnant at 17. I knew that nobody cared about me. And because nobody cared about me, I didn't care what would happen to my life. Yeah, I remember in elementary, I wanted to have friends, but I didn't have anybody um, that wanted to be around me because I was angry all the time. I was sad. I remember walking the soccer field many times by myself, doing laps. Um, I felt unloved and that actually started to transpire to hate. I hated everyone around me. I hated myself. I had the shame that I was carrying and I felt alone. I didn't want to be with anybody even though there was a large crowd. I just felt alone. I had no boundary that I wouldn't push. It was almost, I, I enjoyed pushing every boundary. I enjoyed questioning God. I enjoyed questioning any source of authority. I just would push. It feels like there's people around this pit who see me and they don't want to help. They see me in the They see me in this hole and they just go about their business. They They hear me crying. And Nobody wants to lend me their hand. Nobody wants to pull this kid out of the hole. And so I sat there. It felt like I wrapped myself in this barbed wire and I wanted people to hug me, but I couldn't understand that I was keeping them away because of my pain. I had no I had no parameters sent, set at home as to what a good family dynamic looked like. I was a uh, parentified child. So at a young age, I had to walk myself home from kindergarten in White Center and I had to, at five years old, make my own meals, take care of my siblings, multiple times I had to, I had to go in bars in the middle of the night and get my dad out. And so as I grew up, I thought because I had this had lived this parentified life, then I could do what I wanted. Do you hate anybody? I had murder in my heart. Wow. The person that sexually abused me, I had this plan that once I turned 18, I was gonna get my gun and I was just gonna go and him. And I was gonna end myself afterwards. I wanted to get into trouble with the law and then just have them take me out. And that's exactly what I did. I got in trouble in front of the commons mall. I broke into someone's car. I was drunk and high. And I sat there and the officer showed up. I was slumped over in the car seat. And when officer thought I was reaching for a gun, she told me to show me, show me my hand. But I couldn't do anything because I was intoxicated. So they fired a few uh, tasers in my chest, in my hand. And I was telling them, just kill me.
I told the officers to kill him because I wasn't afraid of death. I was afraid of living. In my teen years, I found a partner who really added to that rebellion. He really um, was just living a life of drugs and partying and drinking, and I joined right along. So my rebellion went from bad to worse really quick. When I was 17, I found out that I was pregnant my senior year of high school. It made me feel what I had already been feeling. I have to take care of this because I just took care of things on my own. That's the reality of real people in this church, their story. And your story is real as well. Your story is real as well. If I could have the ushers help me with that whiteboard, thank you so much. Or Vince, thank you. Uh, we're going to put some, yeah, thank you. Instant in, season out of season. We're going to put some words in front of you that we heard from these testimonies. Some words that completely is what they said, but we're going to put more words actually that are probably related to you as well. Every one of us have a story. Every one of us, take a look at these words, and I want you to choose. If you could bring them right here, that'd be great. Thank you. Every one of us relate to these words. I want you to choose some of these words that relate to your story. I can relate immediately to pain. Pain is of any kind, isn't it? I can relate to hating myself. I've been in seasons where I hated myself. From the front to the back and all across this room, no doubt there's some people like me that you've hated yourself at times. Maybe do even right now, do you know what depression really is? It's anger on the inside. It's anger against ourself, anger against life, the way it is and the way we wish it were. Maybe yours is anger, depression. I've gone through shame. How about you? Take a pick. Take a pick of the literally look at some of these words and see which ones relate to you even not just in the past, but maybe right now. Maybe right now. Today I felt like there was people going to be in these services that you lost hope. Hopeless. You feel hopeless. But that's why you're here. But you feel literally, if someone was to ask you, how do you really feel? Somebody that you trusted and you were able to tell them the truth, you'd say, hopeless. Hopeless. Maybe addicted. Maybe anxiety, maybe even suicidal. And you're here today, and guess what? God loves you that much that you showed up in a cafe at Easter time to a crazy church that loves you like crazy and a God who crazy has crazy love for you. Amen? You showed up to a church that, like, we really believe that you're here. I literally believe, and I prayed, and I've asked Jesus that everybody, if, uh, whoever comes that really doesn't know Jesus, that by the end of this service, you will know Jesus, and you will be saved and forgiven of your sins, and you can have a new story, but you don't have to carry these alone with you. Some feel helpless. Some feel resentment. Let's be honest. Some are unforgiving. Some have, a, have gone through abuse like Thule was talking about, and you can relate to that. And guess what? The wounds don't just disappear. They don't. They're trauma that creates a wound, and the wound we carry through life until we encounter a saving and healing Savior named Jesus Christ. And then he can heal us. But it's, it requires Jesus and Jesus' people to heal. How do I know? Because I've experienced healing in this church. 
I've experienced freedom in this church. Me, Pastor Dan, I've experienced healing and freedom in this church. I'm saying that the issues that I've carried, my brokenness, my hurt, my pain. In fact, can we just say together, let's just have one big group therapy session, can we? Are you ready? We're just going to make some confessions that are real. Let's say this. I've been wounded. I've been hurt. I've struggled. I've experienced pain. I've been broken. That's the truth, isn't it? Tuli and Jessica, that's not just because they're different people we don't experience. Nah, we got our own story, don't we? You have your own story. I have my own story. Which one relates to you? Which one relates to you, honestly? <laughs> some of you say, all of it, all of it, every bit of it, or some of it. So what do we do with that then? What is Easter all about? I'm going to ask, Vince, would you take this away? Because this is really depressing, isn't it? Some of you like saying, I came to Easter, and I'm, now, I'm more depressed than I was when I came in. Man, thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks a lot. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> We're taking it away, all right? But what is Easter really? You're taking that away. Cover it all over, would you, Vince? Cover it over. Some are like, man, would you get me out of the pit? Right? But what is it really all about? Easter is all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, isn't it? Yeah, you can put your hands. It's okay to be, to be excited in church. It's okay to clap. It's all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he meets us in our pain, right? Let's read it together. And you've been sitting for a while. Let's stand together. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. From our only textbook, which is the Bible, it says this. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Now these say, let's say these two words boldly. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. You may be seated. So in Christ all will be made alive. How many are part of the all? What, you, what are the rest of you all doing? <laughs> How many are part of the all? How many are part of the all? Then the, all of us are made alive in who? In Jesus Christ. We're not a made alive in ourselves. Life doesn't come from within. It doesn't come because I created me. I was born because of me. None of it. That is completely a falsity. We cannot say I created myself and I created my life. We didn't get life except for through, through Jesus Christ, right? And ultimately, his father God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, didn't he? We can argue all about it and we can say, well, I don't think so and I don't agree. But who are you and who am I to disagree and, and to, against a, a God who knows all things? Well, the science. Well, the, my brother's a scientist, virologist for 35 years at Abbott Laboratories in Chicago, North Chicago, and he can disprove evolution in five minutes to anybody and everybody with scientific proof. Amen. You ought to meet him. He's a brain. We're opposites. Opposites attract. He's intelligent. He's incredibly intelligent. God gave me the ability to be a loud mouth. But, uh, but. I mean, I mean, seriously, he could disprove evolution, bam. And he loves watching these young college students that come into the labs, and he just watches it. And then they say, this is not supposed to do this according to the science. He says, so what do you think's happening? And so he just works him through because he totally knows creation is an absolute fact of history. It could not, it can't not happen that way. Amen? So, like, we didn't create our life. God gives us life. Then Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Let's look at it. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I've come that you may have, that you may have what? Life to what? And have it to the full. You know what that word means? Abundant life. Let's look at it. 
Abundant life is flourishing, rich and satisfying life. Have it in all its fullness. If we're not having life in all of its fullness, guess what? There's so much more of Jesus in our lives needed. Amen. There's so much more of Jesus in our lives to be seen. Because if we know we could have this, life to the full, rich and satisfying, if we knew we could have this and we settle for this, why would we want to settle for so much less? Why? Why? I mean, we're smart people. Look at your neighbor and say, you're pretty smart. Why would we want to settle for less than Jesus came to give us? He came to give us life. He overcame death and sin and hell. He has all victory. I might start to preach. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the preach. I might just start. I'm telling you, this is why I live. This is why I do what I do. This is why we're married. This is why my family pours our life out for, the, for Jesus and this church. This is why Dream Team, you guys are amazing. This is why the ministry leaders, you guys are absolutely amazing. This church, there's been so many donated labor hours in the last month. It's ridiculous. We've saved tens of thousands of dollars just by people saying, I'll serve, I'll help. Why? Because Jesus is in them. And they're like living an adventure. If you knew you could live this life, sir, if you knew you could live this life and you settled for this, why would you want to settle for this? I'm speaking to some people, and I, I, I felt this morning, I woke up with that thought. I didn't put it in my notes, like, but I felt in my spirit like I was to just encourage you to say, listen, you can have the adventure of your life. He's coming to give us life. Why would we want to settle for this? I'm going to create my life. Good luck. Hope it works for you. Dr. Phil says, how's it working for you? How's it working? Well, I'm pretty discouraged. Well, I'm kind of depressed and anxious and panic attacks and addicted and blah, 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 blah. Relationships aren't working. I'd like to have a relationship, but it's messed up. I'm broken. I feel disgusted, busted. I feel this, this, this. How's it really working for you? When you can have this. He says, I've come to make you new. And I've made you alive in Christ. So in Christ, you can be alive. You can have vibrancy. I'm free from shame. I'm free from guilt. I'm free from fear. I'm free from depression. I'm free from anxiety. You ask my wife. I'm free from panic attacks. I've had all of them. I'm free. I'm free. Like nobody, I didn't do that. I didn't like, oh, get yourself up, Danny. Come on. That's my full name. Don't you call me that. But that's who... That was from my mama to call me when I was little, Danny. All right. But to just get myself up by my, by my bootstraps and say, hey, yeah, I'm getting rid of anxiety and fear and guilt and shame and, and condemnation and anxiety and all fears of life that I had from my childhood. I just got rid of that. You ought to follow me. No, you shouldn't. You should follow Jesus in me. Follow me as I'm following Christ, right? It's nothing good in me. It's only Jesus. So the only thing that's great in me is only Jesus Christ. And because of him, I got new life. I got an adventuresome life, man. We are having the time of our life. That You ask my wife. It's true. We've been married 33 years, 25 good ones. <laughs> How many married folks know about that? Come on. Let's just be, come on, let's be honest. Come on. You've been married. You've been in a relationship a long time. You could say, oh, man, bless God, we've had 10 great years. Well, 10 out of 15 is not bad. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. We've had 25 good years out of 33. All right? We were married when we were children, just 12 <laughs> or a little older. Some of you go like, I don't want to know that. Um, but seriously, you could have a life to the full. Why do we settle for our plans when Jesus came to give us life? to the full, more abundantly rich and satisfying life. I told you my issues. What about y'all's? What about your issues? Are you going to carry them out of this place? Or is there a higher power named God Almighty with a son named Jesus Christ who wants to actually take those burdens, but you got to let them go? Someone's like, I'm, no, I'm hanging on. Wow. Why? Why? I'm not saying things I've said. In my, this is different from my notes. But why are you hanging on? Man, you got life to the full ahead of you. Why hanging on? Well, I'm just hanging on for dear life. I'm going to just buck up and white knuckle it. Why? How is it really working for you? 
not so bueno, not so good. Let's be honest. You see, when we come to Christ, we let go. When we don't, we're hanging on. When we come to Christ, I've never said it this way. This is for this service right now. Coming to Christ is letting go. Not coming to Christ is hanging on. Hanging on to my life. Hanging on to my choices. Hanging on to my will. Hanging on to my beliefs. It's white knuckling it and trying to go through life on our own. And you know what? The only power you have is that with, which, within you. And you and I, I get on my face every Sunday and say, God, I can't change anybody. I can hardly change myself. So I did it this morning. God, it's going to have to be you. Because I can hardly change myself, let alone anybody else. How about we just let it go? I want to read a quote together about the resurrection. And then we're going to have beautiful songs sung about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Let's read this. Resurrection is the supreme vindication of Jesus' divine identity and his inspired teaching. It's the proof of his triumph over sin and death. It's the foreshadowing of the resurrection of his followers. It's the basis of Christian hope. It's the miracle of all miracles. Over 500 people saw Jesus after he was raised from the grave. Eyewitnesses. His own disciples were hiding and cowering, and they were fearing persecution of them. They were hiding in houses, but after he appeared to them, they became absolutely devoted to sharing the best news that he is alive until they were all, except one, crucified. They were killed for their faith. How do you explain that psychological transformation? One thing, the resurrection. Yes, it's real. Would you listen to these songs and take in the messages of what God is wanting to share with us about the death, burial, and resurrection? Thank you, Lord, for the triumphs that come my way, and that way I can grow each day as I met you. And thank you, Lord. The patience those trials bring in the process of growing, I can learn to care, but it goes against the way I am to put my human nature down. Control of all I do. Cause when those trials come, my human nature shouts the thing to do. And God's soft promptings can be easily. Sing it out with us. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I worth the 
Fill my trophies at last I will do I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange its old day for a cross So I'll change stain he washed it white as snow oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from let's the stand dead. together Praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the me white as snow no other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus That when everything's put in place, out in front I can see your face, and it's there you belong. Yes. Yes. You may be seated. How many would love to see the rest of the story of Tuli and Jessica? <laughs> Watch this closely. How did you come to Jesus? My mom invited me to her Bible study. And I agreed to go. During the worship, I hear a voice keep telling me to raise my hands, and I thought it was weird, so I tried to resist for one or two songs. Finally, when I raised my hands, I felt this fire start from the top of my head all the way down. It just consumed. 
and I dropped to my knees. I said, God, forgive me. Now that I know that you're real, I will serve you for the rest of my days. I don't care what happens with my marriage, with my family. I will serve you for the rest of my days. On my last night of partying, I injured myself really badly. I called Jessica the next morning and asked her if she could take me to the emergency room. And we had this conversation and she says, I have pastors and I've accepted Christ in my life. You're gonna meet them first. I agreed. We get to this house and this lady just runs out of the door. She hugs me. She looks into my eyes and says, I love you. And God loves you. And I believed her. I believed her. I knew that I was gonna get the healing that I needed. I knew that I was loved. I just knew. I knew that she wasn't just saying empty words. I knew that she was, she meant it. I just somehow knew in my heart. So we had a prophet speak over us and she said, you are the ones that God took up out of that pit and placed on solid ground, that scripture is for you. Our lives were just completely transformed. God did a 180 in our lives. He literally flipped the script. Yes. He placed a new heart in my in my body and managed to forgive a lot of people and myself. I love more my siblings see the change in my life. They want to be around me. My kids love to be around me. And our marriage is really thriving right now. For the last 12 years, we have been faithfully serving God. There is no other place we rather be. He truly took us out of this pit that we were in, this pit of darkness, of despair, of hurt. He raised us out of it, out of it and he placed us on solid ground. And in that solid foundation, our kids have grown up in the love of God. That baby that I was pregnant with at 17, it's just, an amazing young man of God. Our kids are just amazing children that are serving the Lord with us. And we would not have it, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> yes, yes, let's give it up for Jesus. Let's give it up for Jesus. Wow, the missing element was Jesus, right? The missing element. Let's read Ephesians chapter 2. You might be saying, how can I be made alive in, alive in Christ? Let's read it. How can I be made alive in Christ? Ephesians chapter 2. Let's read it out loud. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we are dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. What is grace? It means God offers his love and his forgiveness as a gift. And let me ask you this. Have you received the gift? You can't earn it. You can't do enough. Have you received, all of y'all, man, we kept adding chairs. You guys are way, way back. I need my glasses just to see you back there. But, and all the way back there, ha have you received the gift? The grace that he loves you and he'll forgive you. It's a gift that we just receive. Have you in this section right here, have you received the gift of his love and grace? so that you could be saved and made alive in Christ. Have you received that gift? It's for everybody, isn't it? It's for the taking of everybody who would believe. That's your requirement and mine, is to believe. And I know you're not here to say, I choose not to. I disagree. You are here on a wonderful Resurrection Sunday to say, yes. Can everybody repeat after me? Yes. One more time. Yes. That just felt too good. Let's say it again. Yes. You know, it's a lot easier to say yes than no. No. You have to put your eyebrows down, teeth clenched. No. 
and people don't even not like looking at you when we, when we say no, right? But yes, raise up your eyebrows and just say yes. That's how easy this is, is yes, Lord. If you really love me that much to send your best, your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins because I'm a sinner. Say that with me, I'm a sinner. If we all admit we're sinners, then the only solution to our sin, the only solution that will keep us from dying eternally is Jesus Christ, who the only one who was raised from the grave to make us alive in Christ. In a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer, and we're going to pray this prayer together, but if today you're saying, you know what, I'm in, this, I'm in this cafe. I mean, this is weird. I'm in a cafe with some happy people. Somebody at the coffee stand, they said, man, you drank some coffee this morning. I said, well, I did, but it's really Jesus. <laughs> I'm just excited about Jesus. Thank you, though. Good coffee helps. But, man, it's really Jesus. They said, you're excited. I said, I'm excited about Jesus. Today you have an opportunity to say yes. And not white knuckle it anymore. Just let it go. Let it go. Many of you today, I believe every person here is going to say yes. I do. I just do in my heart. That even the ones who've been saying no, 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 no for a long time, you're going to say yes. Okay, yes. I surrender. Since Jesus, you gave everything for me. You surrendered everything for me. The least I could do is say yes to you. Would you bow your heads for a moment in respect to one another and this sacred moment that is the next few minutes here is a sacred moment set apart on this Resurrection Sunday. And if you're here today and you're saying, you know what, I, I believe I need to say yes. Yeah, Pastor Dan, you're saying yes, but I believe I'm here to say a new yes. To Jesus. Maybe you've said yes to Jesus before, but really you fell away and you made your own path. But there's many of you today, like in first service, many people who said, I'm going to say a new yes. I'm going to say a new yes to Jesus. Whether you've said yes to him before or not, saying yes is to say, yes, I receive your gift of love forgiveness for my life. And I choose to invite you into my heart to save and forgive me. In a moment, we're going to pray this prayer corporately together. But I'm going to invite you, if you want to be included in this prayer, and you're saying a new yes today. You know who you are. You know who you are. You didn't wind up here because of an accident. But you're here because you're going to say a new yes to Jesus Christ. And you're going to receive the gift of forgiveness, his love, salvation, freedom, healing. When I count to three, nobody's looking around. Let's just respect the environment and respect one another as we bow our heads for a moment. But if you're saying a new yes today, at the count of three, and you want to be included in this prayer, I want to encourage you to just lift your hand all across this whole auditorium, this cafe. You're saying a new yes. Wow, many, <laughs> wow, many people already raising their hand. One, two, three. Yes, a new yes to Jesus. A new yes. Lift your hands all across from the back. I see you, sir, back there. I see you in the front, in the second row. God bless. I see you guys in the middle, in this left section. I see you way in the back, way in the back, in the left section. I see you way back, way back. I see you in the front, in the center section. Praise God. I see many, many, many hands. Many hands, many hands in my left, in your right section. Many hands, many hands in the back, in the right section. God bless you. Keep your hands raised high. Keep your hands raised high. So you're saying a new yes to Jesus. There's probably 20, at least 20 hands here raised. Praise God. You can put your hands down and let's say this prayer together boldly. Say this prayer. Say, Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross. Because of your love, you chose to suffer, to take my place for my sins. I thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful today that you did what I couldn't do. You died for me so I could live for you. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse my heart. Come into my heart. 
and make me new. From this day forward, be my Savior and the Lord of my life. From this day forward, I say yes. I say yes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give them a hand for those who said a new yes. Yes. Wow. <coughs> wow. A new yes. I've never said that, have I, Dan? Ever. Never said that. Never said that. It's a new yes, isn't it? It's a new yes. Some of you said yes before, but this one, you really meant it. Yes, this is a new yes for you. So, Pastor, what do we do? As the worship team comes, what do we do? What do we do? In fact, you know, we're going to show a video. It looks like VHS. How many, something technical happened. I don't know if it's corrected, um, but it may look like VHS. How many remember VHS tapes? Okay, you're old too. All right. Something tech happened. You know, these guys work so hard, but something in the translation, it, it, it might be corrected. But if it looks like a VHS tape, just bear with it. Listen to the testimonies of people that lives have been made new. Watch these. I grew up with Jesus in my life, um, but this church uh, kind of provided the community backing for that. Um, I went to church a little bit as a child, but never built like relationship. Yeah. And also this church, like they speak on what other churches don't speak on, but what we need to hear. Since moving here two years ago, um, my husband and I have been praying for a church and we looked everywhere, including Google, um, and we finally found family life, you know, as soon as we saw Pastor Dan chasing us out as we were heading to our car, he, you know, he got us here and he got us immigrated to the church and we felt like family yeah. since. There's been lots of times where I've just struggled with just feeling like not enough and Jesus has brought me to family life and I have just flourished and grown since I've been here. Well, I had at times struggled with my faith and being led to a faith-based church. Man, it's made a ton of difference in my life. Faith has been renewed and I've strengthened my commitment to the Lord. And you know what? I'm closer to finding my purpose and I'm very, very happy with that. Jesus has taken all the burden that I was carrying and I know that I'm no longer alone. And uh, he's also in my family. Uh, we welcome him into our family. And he's made a change in our family that we've been looking for in the world so we can find it. And I would say the same thing. I just, uh, I learned to start it, to start uh, giving him all my problems, all my burdens, just everything, just surrendering it all to him. And it's just, I've just been living with uh, much more peace than I was before. And it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Megan and I started coming here in 2018, it was about six years ago, and we had just been married, we, like we weren't even married two weeks, and we first started, co started coming here, and my goodness, we just immediately found our second family, and I can't tell you how important it was to have, to be here during those very formative years of our marriage. Our marriage is just, I mean, we have the strong foundation of Christ that we do in our marriage because of family life in Jesus. Praise God. So guess what? If you said a new yes to Jesus, your very next step is to get connected to Jesus' people. You heard that, didn't you? Every one of them said family life. If you got your own church, great, go there. But family life is here to help you walk out your faith in a real way. Otherwise, we can't do it alone. Amen? You guys ready to celebrate? We're going to celebrate now. Turn on your celebration hat, would you put it? And stay seated for a moment. I don't, I see it as a test Cause I was lost 
Timmy Turner, always chasing after Vicky, uh, took me to his fountain, gave me peace and chose to cleanse me up. Now I'm testifying to your greatness, this a different love. Whoa, oh, oh, Life been moving fast, let's, let's take, take it slow, it oh, oh. Take walk by the river, river and let you flow, oh, oh. Cause Lord, you are all I have won, you're all I have won. Cause I was lost until you found me, now I know you're all around me. Nothing I could ever do can separate my love from you. You came to set us free. Look at my hands, they look blue. When I look at my feet, they do too, cause I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah. When I look at my hands, they look blue. When I look at my feet, they do too, cause I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah, thank God I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah. Cause I'm free, I'm free, thank God I'm free, I'm free. Right, you guys ready to party with us? This is what they do at the end of youth group every Wednesday. It's just a dance party. It's just a dance party. Aaron, would you come and just lead us? You guys can stand if you'd like. And we're just going to celebrate the resurrection in a creative way. Take it away, Aaron. Celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, right? He's risen, he's risen. 
sing it again. He is risen. over me I'm sorry I don't know if that was the Holy Spirit or what man I was famous when I was 12 as a rapper I was famous in my own mind anyway <laughs> so how many just think we need to celebrate Jesus huh we just need to celebrate I want you guys to keep playing that and guess what I'm requesting this next week how many would love to come back and like celebrate again because they work so hard on this can we give it up for them Wow, they work so hard. And so guys, would you just prepare next week? Huh? And then we're gonna prepare next week to, for a different dance and then another one. And this is what they do at the end of youth group every Wednesday, they're dancing. He's risen and they're doing different sound songs. Wouldn't you rather have them dancing in church than dancing out there in the world, rapping, hip hopping for the devil? Wouldn't you rather have them celebrating in church with Jesus, amen. How do you do that? Okay, you get it. All right, we're just gonna watch the wire, the, the electric. Okay, who's starting it? <laughs> this is what they do for Jesus. I'm gonna encourage you if you want prayer, prayer teams are gonna be here and there, and they will absolutely love to pray with you. How many have enjoyed this service? How many enjoyed this service? <laughs> So guess what? Come on back. Wednesday is first Wednesday. We're going to pray over this building. Come on back next Sunday, 9, 11, or 1 o'clock. If you speak Spanish, come at 1 o'clock, all right? Receive prayer. And the parents or grandparents, go to the play zone. Get your kids in the kids zone, but then go way to the other end to the play zone. God bless you. Thank you. If you brought an offering, feel free to just put in the offering bucket or give online. God bless you. Thanks for being here.